People all week have been uh, having an opinion about a school in Queensland, a school that apparently uh, had sent out some sort of a survey, some sort of a contract, a newsletter, depending on which version of this, but all of it was a suggestion that all the kids should somehow uh, commit to the gender of which they were born with. I'm not entirely sure why. My view is that we have seen, again, some interesting little standards. Remember last week we were talking about a person who wouldn't wear a pride jumper because of their religious belief. That was apparently OK. Now, I don't understand how any religious belief has a particular view on homosexuality or, or uh, uh, transgenderism or anything like that. And I also am consistent here that the law of the church should never trump the law of the land. So it was a disgrace, in my view, that this school ever never got anywhere near it. Uh, uh, sorry, got anywhere near this thing. Now, because their funding was about to be pulled, apparently they have now pulled the survey, but the question now is about issues like religious discrimination laws. Do things have to be tweaked that say, even if you are an all-in, hardcore Christian school, you cannot get your students to have to commit to a gender or sexuality position? Here's the PM. My kids go to a Christian school here in Sydney and I wouldn't want my school doing that either. And um, well, the bill that we're going to be uh, taking through the parliament um, uh, will we'll be having an amendment which will deal with that to ensure that the kids cannot be um, discriminated against on that basis. And Queensland's Education Minister, who is the parent of a non-binary child, said this. But schools have got a very robust anti-bullying campaign in all schools and I urge all students be respectful, um, love your neighbour and, of course, make sure that bullying, no way. Now, Bronwyn, again, if you get a stick of government funding, then you should have to play absolutely by the rules. I think you should, even if you don't, I don't want any facility in this country to make it uncomfortable in any way, shape or form for who, what, pe uh, who people are. What's your thought about this week, though? Because, uh, again, last week, nothing to see here when it was about uh, the religious freedom of somebody not to promote a, a gay pride jumper. But then um, we have this scenario playing out this week. Well, you make that point very well, Paul. Uh, and there are double standards that are applied in this area. But, of course, uh, the, the idea of the uh, commitment they were asking of people was, was just against all the rules for school funding. Uh, somebody quite clearly hadn't done their homework, uh, to put it mildly. I mean, to discriminate against children in that manner um, just isn't going to wash, nor should it. And, obviously, uh, the question of funding has changed the principal's mind. Uh, as it should. Uh, now, the bottom line is this. We're told that a panacea for all of these problems will be uh, a, a freedom of religion piece of legislation. I don't agree with it. Well, me too. I argued very, very strongly when we had the referendum in 1988 about a mini Bill of Rights being inserted into the Constitution and one part of that was uh, a freedom of religion question. And I argued very strongly that the Constitution, which says there'll be no um, state-based um, religion in the country, that the, the law of the land is what rules, not the law of the church, it would be a canon of the Catholic Church or of the Protestant Church or of the Muslim um, mosque or the Jewish uh, temple. None of that will ever uh, usurp the authority of the law made by parliaments. And the proposed law, as I see it, is just going to be a mishmash of prohibitions. It's not a guarantee of freedom, to my way of thinking at all. And it offends people of, uh, of gender, um, of people who are part of the LGBTQA community, um, just as much as it offends me. And I think that there needs to be civility in this, in this discussion. There needs to be an understanding of people who are um, identifying differently. Uh, but I also think that the postmodernist doctrines that are being rammed down people's necks mm. need to be dispelled. But that's a question for another day. Yeah, Meryl, right now, it was predictable. Yeah, Meryl, part of the assumption here is that you know, religious freedom laws are some sort of a wedge for Labor, this, that and the other. I just think the reality is is that um, Australia, you know, don't be a dick, should always be the policy on everything, right? And when people are and they're using government money, then you should go after them as hard as possible. What's your thought of what we've seen this week? 
oh, look, Paul, I can't get over this because we've had kids basically disconnected and out of school for two years now. If I were a teacher and a parent, uh, I am a parent, my daughter finished year 12 last year, I would just want my kids back in the classroom where they're learning to think, where they're learning to problem solve and in a climate where they're learning manners and tolerance and they're mixing with a whole raft of people like they will be when they leave school in the real world. So we need to teach our kids tolerance, we need to get them solving problems, but we just need them back in good classrooms. So I, I just think that this school is completely misguided and I bet the parents paying the money to send their kids there are probably more interested in their children being back in the classroom and being taught than going off on th this tangent. And at the end of the day, it's about raising and educating good thinking, mm. decent people. That's yeah. what this our education system should be about. No, 100%. That's the thing. People, you Simple know, as that, really. <laughs> I, I, I think we're all strangers on a unity ticket there. So